into a fight, I will be dead in Haiti. I never want to die someplace else. This is a fight. I know the danger of the fight. If they kill me, so what? It is Haiti that has to be saved, not me. Those were the words that were uttered by Antoine Ismery to the Washington Post, while marching and protesting at his brother George's funeral. Antoine and George Ismery were two prominent Haitian businessmen. Belonging to the country's elite class, the brothers witnessed a form of oppression that they themselves, despite being rich couldn't accept nor tolerate. The brothers were of Palestinian background, and their presence in Haiti have long symbolized the deep ties of solidarity between Palestinians and Haitians. During World War I and the Arab-Israeli War, Haiti received an estimate of 257,000 Arab residents in the country. They were received amicably by the Haitian populace, but were shunned by the elite mulattoes and white Haitians because of their willingness to do business with the masses and their inability to speak French. Nevertheless, Antoine and George Ismery never changed their attitudes towards the people, they continued to do business with the masses and contributed incessantly to the change that was on the rise in Haiti. In December 1990, Antoine decided to put his money where his mouth was, not only by endorsing the pro-democratic candidate, Jean Bertrand Aristide, but also by financing his entire campaign. The U.S. decided to back another candidate, Mark Bazin, and promised him the presidency through a rigged election. On the eve of the 1990 elections, Antoine Ismery warned the U.S. former president, Jimmy Carter, and his administration, if Mark Bazin comes to power through a rigged election, they would have to take charge of the bloodbath that would occur in the streets of Haiti. To his surprise, Aristide won the election, but was toppled soon after by a coup d'etat against his regime and forced into exile. Determined not to give up, on September 30, 1991, Ismery founded the Comvib organization, which attempted to discover and publicize the events surrounding the coup and see the return of democratic government. Many of the elites in Haiti detested the Ismery brothers because of their controversial beliefs. Antoine and George Ismery wanted to see a prosperous Haiti, where everyone regardless of their skin color would have a chance at a decent life. They hated the lack of justice in the country, and the way the oligarchs conspire together along with European powers, in order to keep the majority of the people in the country poor. On May 26, 1992, George Ismery, the youngest of the brothers, closed his business like usual, and walked to his car that was parked a few feet away from the building. While walking, he was shot in the back before hundreds of witnesses, by a group of soldiers in civilian clothing, who, after the crime, went into the police station, a short distance away from where the events occurred. Soon after, another group of police officers took control of the crime scene, and prevented any of George's family to approach him. The victim was not dead at the scene, and could have been saved if he was rushed to the hospital on time. The family doctor was not allowed to enter the morgue, even after he was pronounced dead, and the body could only be recovered three days later, through the efforts of an attorney. Prior to these events, Mr. George Ismery's house had been raided by police officers without a search warrant. The domestic servant was beaten and taken to prison. She was released that same night without being given any reason for her detention. Antoine Ismery subsequently lodged a complaint with the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights over the death, which sparked a sharply critical resolution from the commission. On September 11, 1993, a year and four months after his brother's murder, Antoine himself was assassinated in broad daylight by a death squad composed of ten armed men tied to Haiti's military and police. He was dragged from a memorial church service at Sacred Cur, honoring victims of the 1988 St. Jean Bosco massacre, forced to kneel in the street, and shot point-blank in the head by a single bullet. The suspects were never convicted, due to irregularities, evidence tempering and witness intimidations. The people that were responsible for the crime, Jackson Jonis and Michel Francois, were soon acquitted by the government in a sham single night trial. Today we remember the Ismery brothers as the true soldiers that they were in the army in the fight for Haiti. Antoine and George Ismery were both Haiti's heartbeat and lifeline, and enemies of the Paysay Suzy system, 